its time. It's time. And now, it's time for Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank you for joining us, all you good-looking people. <laughs> You've qualified. Thank you so much for joining us, and yes. we do appreciate it. You know, there are so many unusual things that happen, and I don't have time to share them. Oh, I wanted to I hear I really them. don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, I have so much going on in my head that I would love to share with you. Someday we have got to have a program where I just get all this stuff off my chest. You, you want me on with you? or? Well, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> <'Cause, 'cause laughs> I might be some of the problem. <laughs> Could be. No, yeah. Uh -huh, just just uh -huh, kidding. Uh -huh. But, uh, uh, <laughs> but you, I need you as kind of a buffer because you, you hold me back. Really? And that's good. Yeah. What, people come up to us all the time, you well know, and they say, I appreciate Sharon because she kind of restrains you sometime. And they like that. The females out a there, lot kind of, of time. Yeah, they probably identify with her husband and said, I wish I could restrain mine. So <laughs> she restrains me. But, but you're getting so much better. I, I have less restraining to do. Oh, well, it's because next birthday, 70. What does that got to do with it? You I'm get getting better older. as you get older? Yeah, you get better. And, it, and you're. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> T has got all the sound effects. That's a whip, and and she's learned to use that very well. But uh, we have a guy today. This, uh, let, let me just set this up. John McCain. Yes, he lost, but John McCain was an American hero. I mean, think of this guy Absolutely. in prison, beaten. I mean. You know, his mind, if it would have been mine, I would have said, just kill me. I don't want this anymore. But he had that survival mode, mm -hmm. and he's an American hero. But this guy, Peter Waldron, to me, is my hero. Mm. That's true. I mean. He's got quite a story. Oh, my goodness. You, you've got to stay tuned. Yeah. You've got to stay tuned. Hear this story. Peter Waldron was on the mission field for five years in Uganda, East Africa. In 2006, Peter was falsely accused, tortured, and thrown into solitary confinement in a Uganda prison, which must have been awful. Can't imagine. Uh, but then President George Bush telephoned the president of Uganda on March 26, 2006, and demanded his release, and he is here with us today to tell his story. T, let's give President George Bush some applause. He doesn't get them very often. <laughs> There it is. Crank it up. <laughs> Crank it up. Okay. Crank it up. Okay, let's go over and meet all our right, guests. Right, okay. We, <laughs> <laughs> we oh. got so many people in here, you know. Good to have you, oh, good night. Thank you so much. Good to have you, Peter. Thank you, madam. You really are my hero, buddy. Well, I'm mean, kind of you. I mean, just we're we're gonna put up his email so that you can contact him. This is so well written. Thank you. I mean, and I read hundreds of mm. books. This is well written. Did it's you have timeless. Some? It's timeless. It is. You, you know, that's it's biblical when I, principles. When I'm reading this, because this was like written in the 80s. That's correct. And I'm reading this and I'm going, he could have written this right now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Biblical principles are eternal. Wow. And the principles that are applied and referenced in this book are principles that must be applied today in light of the recent election. Oh, absolutely. As a consequence of the turn of this nation to socialism, away from our historic uh, democracy, our republic, mm -hmm. our free enterprise, our capitalist system, these principles well, are needed together. today. You've got yeah. it all together. They're needed today. They're oh, needed they today. Sure we you, can't wait till next year. You know, you know, when I look at this guy in person, because I, you know, reading his, I mean, unbelievable conditions that he has lived in and I'm thinking to myself wow and looking at this guy eyeball to eyeball I'm saying to myself you have that look in your eye like you know I don't care what you do to me you can't take my soul when I was beaten on more than one occasion uh, I was beaten to where I was on the ground I can remember a torturer, one of the members of the president's death squad, who was clubbing me and hitting me, uh, doing everything he can uh, to 
force me into signing a false confession, I would get up off the ground. On one occasion, he said to me, stay there, don't get up. Wow. And I would get back up. And as I reflect, as I certainly have had time to do uh, since those beatings and that time in prison, I, uh, I realized there were two things that raised me up. First is I'm born again. I'm a lover of the Lord Jesus Christ, and there is no power on earth that can keep me down. Wow. Hit me once, wow. I'm getting back up again. Wow. You've got to deal with me and the Holy Ghost. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. There's no weapon formed against me. I would cast down these uh, thoughts and ideas, and I would get back up. And the second one, I'm an American, and you can't keep me down. Wow. That's right. Wow. And that's I would right. rise right up again. Now, was this a shock when they accused you of oh, this Oh, absolutely. Thing? Okay, I, now, set it up. Uh, if you will, I was in uh, Uganda. Uh, I was working with a uh, software company out of the United States. You're a salesman. I'm a, I was a manager. Okay. Uh, I managed a software application mm -hmm. that uh, literally uh, monitored and measured the distribution of antiretroviral drugs to HIV AIDS patients. Oh. Uh, several years ago, the Lord had placed in my heart an earnest desire to extend, ex, uh, expand and extend his kingdom on earth. Uh, as I depend on God, he would provide opportunities, uh, whether that opportunity was to go to Alaska, only as an illustration, where I would help organize an amendment to the Alaska uh, state constitution, eventually a referendum wow. that would define marriage as a relationship between one man and one woman. So you, you were helping Sarah Palin. That, at the time, it was a president. <laughs> well, that's why she believes. She wasn't a Wasilla yeah. at the time, yeah. but a Wasilla. Well, but she I, believes that. Oh, absolutely she does. But, I, you know, very instrumental. I worked with uh, Brother Dobson and Brother Bauer. Wow. And uh, we did, uh, through their help and the help of 170,000 people, we, uh, we attached, as it were, an amendment. But God is always, in his search for those who are devoted to him in heart, yeah. would find me. And then uh, from that, I went to work for the Bauer campaign when he ran in 2000. Mm -hmm. And then Gary sent us over to work with John McCain. I got very close to him and wow. the entire organization. And from there, I went to work with the Washington Times. And with the Washington Times, they would uh, send me around the world to really document. One uh, special report that I did was the war against women. How were women treated in Afghanistan? Imagine, this is before 9-11. Wow. And I'm, uh, I'm documenting how the Taliban treated women, how China forced abortions, how India had dowry burning. So I'm doing these special reports, but God in his sovereignty. Now, now I understand why they thought you were a CIA spy. Oh, brother. Uh, well, I've been to Afghanistan, uh, worked and opposed the Mujahideen. I've uh, been to Iraq, uh, been all over the world, and God has done that. So what happened here? What happened here in uh, February of 2006, I was preparing for a presentation before the, uh, the U.S. Embassy. Uh, I was, and the contract that I represented and the, con, uh, the client I worked uh, with uh, were uh, in position to receive an $18 million to $20 million contract to uh, expand their software application throughout Uganda. It was the one of a kind, first of its kind. Wow. And uh, so on a Sunday night, uh, I'm sitting there finishing uh, this presentation for the U.S. Embassy and the Global Fund uh, out of uh, Geneva, Switzerland. And uh, my assistant was there uh, helping me assemble some of the papers, helping me with the PowerPoint. And uh, she was about to go home and she said, I got to iron your shirt yeah, so that I'd be ready for Wednesday. So before she left, she's ironing the shirt. I'm downstairs. I'm wrapping up this PowerPoint presentation. The doorbell rings. I go to the door. Uh, that is the gate bell, I should say. Uh, I walk through my door, walk to the gate, look through the little hole, and there's a, a policeman standing who says, may we come in? And I said, certainly, not knowing the yeah. reason. So I opened this huge steel gate, and in came about two dozen uh, wow. Ugandan policemen uh, dressed in riot gear. They come breaking into my property. Uh, they lowered their weapons. The sergeant says that you have weapons here. And I said, what are you talking about? And for the next two hours, uh, they searched my home, found nothing. There was nothing. I have a very large home in a Kampala suburb. They found nothing. They looked everywhere. Uh, and uh, they were about to leave when a group of men in plain clothes came. Blue jeans, uh, khaki jeans and slacks. Uh, open